Hello again. Uh, I can explain. Uh, Teddy Ruxpin and I just want to quickly thank you so much for your generous support through the Phobos tier membership. It's really made a big difference, and because this channel is probably never going to get huge, like a Fortnite channel or something, um, it makes a big difference and helps out financially. And also helps us to afford these, uh, these wonderful glitter bath bombs that Teddy Ruxpin loves so much. So, see, so yeah, I hope you're enjoying the channel, and thanks a lot. And once again, I promise this isn't creepy! Wait a minute, what does this say? Surface wash only? Oh my goodness! Hello again, EDF friends. Welcome back to my quick mission tips. We're on mission 107, which I would say is probably the hardest mission in the game. Um, the only other mission that might be close is mission DLC pack 1, mission 13, but because you have DLC weapons, I think it's easier. Um, so anyway, this is um, this is a strategy going to be based on people who don't have limits off and uh, have lower health and just uh, need a strategy to beat this mission because it's very tough. So, as far as the biggest threats, I would say the biggest threats, number one, is tadpoles, um, especially because there's a number of purples that come with it. Um, second threat would be wasps, and then third would be the bosses. You have some wasp queens, you have some queen ants, king spiders, and then last of all, D-Roys. So for this mission, you're going to want a distraction roll and a sniper slash attacker roll, um, ideally, because it's very hard to solo this mission, honestly. Um, so, as far as if you're going to be the sniper roll, for, for Ranger, which I'd prefer Sniper over, over a Distraction for Ranger, but anyway, so if you're going to do the Sniper roll, I would recommend taking um, your best uh, Emerald Missile Launcher, and then um, that, that way you can attack some enemies from the corner as well. And then also I would recommend taking your best Sniper, so his, his Snipers aren't the greatest this time around, but they are functional, you can still use them to snipe the pillars and bosses. And then, and then last of all, I would recommend taking your best Brute, which is probably the better choice, but you can also take a, a Railgun if that happens to be more damage on the difficulty you're playing. Um, and then, as far as Wing Diver goes, if she's going to be the Sniper role, then I would recommend taking the Mirage, um, your best Mirage 15, or the, the other ones down here, Mirage 15. And then I'd recommend taking your best sniper. Now, as far as if you have your sniper rifle um, maxed out, you could probably get away with taking the Ryzen. Um, but if the range is not high enough, this one's the max is 631. So if your range isn't high enough, I recommend taking the monster. And then I would recommend taking the 200% core, level 78, um, so that you can actually fire this thing faster and use the Mirage uh, faster from the corner to do more damage. And then for Air Raider, if you're going to be the sniper roll, um, I would recommend taking the Phobos. Any of the Phobuses that have a multi-line, so Phobos 88, Phobos, uh, what is it? Phobos 43, and then there's also a Phobos 27, and I think there's one lower as well. And a Phobos 20 as well, I believe, does the same thing. But you want one to do multi-line, pretty much. You don't want to do the ones that do straight lines, although if you have to, I suppose you get away with it. And then, um, for, your, for your next weapon, I'd recommend taking a uh, sprite fall. Uh, sprite falls are very good for the bosses, they're very good for the pillars, so I'd recommend taking one of those. Um, and then also I'd recommend taking either a 105 or a Vulcan Cannon, so you can set them and then change to another weapon and fight. Or you could change it out for a Bulge Laser too maybe, if you want to do that as well. And then last of all, I'd recommend for vehicles, I'd recommend taking your best Barga. Barga is very good here, uh, especially for the tadpole phase, so I'd recommend taking one of those. And then for Fencer, if you're going to be the sniper roll, I'd recommend taking uh, two heavy cannons um, right here, these these up here, the uh, battle cannons. There's different versions of them, the Gallic heavies. Um, so two of those, and then I'd recommend taking probably, I would recommend probably taking a jackhammer dispersion mortar, because dispersion mortar you can fire from the corner and, and kill some enemies from far away. Jackhammer you can fight if, if anything gets near you. Um, I'd probably recommend taking that, honestly. Um, you could also switch it out for two high-altitude missiles from the corner, and then instead of taking two heavy cannons, you could take two NC cannons. The reason I say two NC cannons is better probably because if you get bitten by a tadpole, you can free yourself easier. If anything gets near, you can fire it a little quicker, a little easier. But I don't know how, how safe I feel um, taking two high-altitudes high without a speed setup, but you could still you know, take multiple jumps. And now if you're the distraction roll, um, if you're a ranger, um, I'd, you'd probably need a little bit more health. You're probably going to need about, I don't know, seven, 8,000 on Inferno at least if you're going to be distraction roll. But it is possible. I've done it before. Um, I'd recommend taking the 200% sprint. That's very important because you will not get knocked down. Or, not, or sorry, you will not get slowed down when you get fired, when you get sh shot at. 
So take that for your sprinting, and then of course take a healing bomb um, to heal yourself and knock enemies away from you. And then last of all, I'd probably take your best slaughter shotgun, just because it has better range. Um, if you're the wing diver, I would recommend wing diver is a good uh, distraction roll. You want to take your uh, your 200% dash or 100% dash, sorry, uh, jet core. Um, there's multiple versions of it as well, or anything with increased uh, dash speed, pretty much you want. And then for your weapons, this is where you could probably uh, change it up a little bit. Um, you could, I, I personally like um, the Thunderbow because it's good at killing the pillars from far away from the ground. It has enough reach, so you could maybe take a Thunderbow. You could maybe switch it out for a Stardust Cannon, which you have to be careful with energy on this thing. But it is also possible to hit the pillars, and and it's good at firing. It's good at fighting early on in the waves as well. Um, you could take a Lance. Uh, I like the Lance a lot because it's low energy. Um, you could take Glyphnir as well. Those are probably the four main weapons I was thinking of if you're going to be up front um, because you're going to be moving around the whole time and you, you're going to want to be able to fight. If you want to fight from far away, you're going to need something that can fight, you know, a quick burst damage. So those are the weapons I'd recommend. Um, for Air Raider, if you're the Kiter roll, which I guess it is possible. I wouldn't say he's the best at Kiter roll, but I would probably take your best Red Guard. Um, those are the fastest Nicks, so you can jump around. Um, you want then then since you're gonna be jumping around and being up front, distracting, you want to you're gonna want quick calling air raids. So I'd probably recommend a KM6. Those are pretty good. They're very cheap. It kills a lot of enemies. Um, you can take a Phobos. I would definitely recommend taking a Phobos as well. That's quick calling as well. Those those four line or multiple line Phobuses. Or um, you could also take a Sprite Fall, Bulge Laser, Vulcan Cannon 105. Those are quick calling as well, where you could get out of the vehicle really quick, call it in, and then get back in the vehicle and keep jumping around. So those are the recommendations for Air Raider. And then last ball Fencer, he's a very good kiting roll as well. Um, I personally like two high altitude missiles here because you're gonna be you're gonna be running around up front, but you can also fight. So two high altitude missiles, and then for your other weapon setup, um, I kind of like uh, the vibro hammers <coughs> because like the finest hammer, or there's also lower versions, uh, vibro hammer. That's uh, pretty low level though. But the finest hammer because it gives you damage reduction. I kind of like that, and then probably dispersion mortar would be a good secondary because you can fight um, while you're running around. You can turn around, do quick burst damage, or you can switch out for a shotgun maybe. But um, those are the weapons I'd recommend. Of course, you know your best multiple dashes and multiple jumps um, for that setup. So, um, so yeah, that's going to be the the uh, weapons uh, suggestions. So um, let's go ahead and get started in the mission and explain how this mission works. Alright, as always, I'm going to be playing this on limits off, uh, lower difficulty, so I can do this mission quickly, so I don't make the video too long. But these missions have, these strategies have been tested on uh, higher difficulties. I've played this game mission many times on Inferno. And as always, also, I'd like interested in your ideas and your strategies, so go ahead and share them in the comments if you would, please. Alright, so right at the beginning, you're going to have D-Roys, you're going to have brown spiders, and you're going to have a bunch of drones. So the person that's the sniper um, and attacker role wants to take all these NPCs, and they want to start heading to the back left corner. So back here, because that's where you're going to be staying most of the time. And of course, the person that's attacking or distracting, sorry, can go up front, and uh, you can actually lead these brown spiders away from all the NPCs. So um, I'd recommend staying away from the D-Roys a little bit, but the person that's attacking should try and focus on the D-Roys' legs or focus on the D-Roys themselves, because um, that's very important to help to help with the person that's uh, that's distracting. But uh, you can you can go to dash forward and just go to the to the edge of the map and just uh, pull the enemies away from the attacker and it makes it a lot easier for that person that's sniping. Um, I'd recommend focusing on the D-Roys first and then the uh, brown spiders and then last of all the drones. And the, the reason that makes this mission so difficult is because there's no rest time. You can't just um, heal up and get ready for the next phase. The phases keep coming so it can be very difficult and that's what makes this mission harder than the other missions I think. Um, especially because the tadpole phase, um, you don't have time to uh, regroup. It just comes in, and then even when the tadpoles aren't all dead, then you have to face the pillars, so it can be very tough. So anyway, so I'm a, the person that's, of course, sniping is going to take these guys to the back and try and protect them and keep them alive. Of course, throw throw any bargas as fast as possible if you have air raider. Uh, throw your vehicles, of course, as fast as possible with ranger. But try and throw them in the corner. Try and get to the very far corner if you're going to throw a vehicle out, because you don't want them too far forward. Um, and then, so once you... Um, kill enough enemies here. I'd recommend killing all the D-Roys first, um, and then like I said, the brown spiders, and then the drones last. But once you kill enough enemies, the next phase is going to come in. That's going to be a bunch of wasps. And they're going to be coming in from the front left corner, and you're going to have a bunch of wasps, and you're going to have one wasp queen. 
So that can be pretty tough because if you don't focus on the queen right away, the next phase can happen before that queen is dead, and that, that's something you do not want. So I'd recommend focusing on the little wasps first. Um, don't, don't worry about the cosmonauts. Um, try and, uh, if you have to kill them, of course you can, but don't, don't focus on them too much. Um, try and keep them last. Um, but, uh, but for the next phase, like I said, you want to leave, um, leave all the rolly balls. They're going to spawn in the front. I'll also show that as well. So this is me facing forward. Um, the way you can tell which side is forward is there's train tracks over here. Um, so that's something to look forward to know you're in the front of the map. Um, and uh, any, like these right here, these tracks. And also something important I'd recommend is don't try, try your best not to kill these buildings in the front right corner because this is going to be for your distractor, a place that you can come in and actually uh, recover some energy if they're a wing diver or, you know, heal bomb themselves if they're a ranger, get a little bit of distraction, a little bit of breathing time. And uh, I would recommend trying to, uh, trying your best not to, uh, not to destroy those buildings if possible, like with the Phobos or the high altitude missiles or whatever, hammer. Okay, so the next phase came in. So the next phase comes in, you're going to have a bunch of rolly balls spawned in the front of the map here, which can be tough for ranger distracting, and then a bunch of wasps coming from the front left. So I'd recommend focusing on the uh, wasps first, of course. Those are the most important for your distractor. And then the queen, I'd recommend trying to focus on the queen next as priority. Try and leave the rolly balls as much as possible because if you kill them, then the next phase might happen sooner, and you don't want that. You want to make sure the Queen Wasp is dead. So, unfortunately, though, if you're a Ranger, you may struggle a little bit trying to distract up front with these Rolly Balls. Um, you may have to, like I said, run to that front right corner with all those buildings and uh, use those buildings to kind of protect yourself from the Rolly Balls and then kind of kill them with a shotgun once the Queen is dead. But you want to focus on this Queen before the next phase comes in. So, of course, the Sniper can be focusing on the Queen. And for the most part, if the Distractor's up front, they're not going to have too many enemies in the back with them. And if they do, the NPCs will help distract them. So, um, so that's, and plus you have Barga, you have a vehicle by then. If you're Wing Diver, you'll be able to kill those. Kill the enemies pretty quickly with your weapons that you have. So, so the next phase is going to happen once you kill enough enemies. So, like I said, if you leave some of these drones, you'll have extra points on the map to won which won't push the phase. If you leave some big guys, it'll kind of slow down the phase as well a little bit, which is important. But the next phase is the worst because, for one, if you're not ready, if the queen is not dead, then you're going to have to face the queen with all these tadpoles. And the tadpoles, are, there's just so many of them. There's purple ones as well. So this is where the Barga comes in very well with the, with the, the, um, just with, with the uh, killing tadpoles. So if you're the distractor, you could always run forward and, and take one of the Bargas because you should have two Bargas out by now. Um, that's one, one option you can do if you don't feel comfortable with the distraction up front. Um, of course, um, it, just having the 200% dash will help you be survivable with the Wing Diver, but um, I'd recommend kind of gathering together during the Tadpole phase because it is very tough, and um, I'd recommend fighting together for that phase. Because after this phase is going to be the, the, the last phase, which is the, the, um, the, the Anchor phase, which is, which is tough because there's going to be Tadpoles still alive, and chances are the purple ones are going to be still alive. And that's what makes it tough. So it's not as simple as just a wing diver waiting on top of a building for when the pillars come in, she flies up to the top and kills them. You can't really do that, at least from my, the times I've attempted that. It's tough because there's still tadpoles chasing you as a wing diver. And unless you have obscene amount of health, those tadpoles can knock, you know, a good three, 4,000 off on you, especially if it's a purple one. So it's not as simple to just get your energy back up and ready for the last phase. So that's why I recommend... Um, taking the Thunderbow or the Stardust Cannon because that way you can fight the pillars from the ground. But anyway, so you're going to want to try and gather together and just try and kill these tadpoles as best you can. Like I said, Barga's very good on these. Um, missiles, of course, are very good. High altitude missiles, you know, MEX, um, for Ranger. Um, I, I guess I probably wouldn't recommend gathering together. No, I, think, I guess I still would. Even if you're a Ranger in the corner, I guess you still want to fight together with your Distractor. But you want to try your best to kill as many tadpoles, of course, as possible, and uh, preferably the purple ones, if at all possible. But the next phase is going to come in is going to have five pillars. There's going to be two on the right side. So this is me looking towards the train tracks, towards the front of the map. Two on the right side pillars, um, and then two on the left, and then one in the middle. The priority ones are going to be the two on the right side. And the reason I say that is because those both spawn wasps. And that is, that is going to be the toughest for your distractor, believe it or not. 
Um, the king bosses in the middle are not that big of a deal for a fast distractor. And plus, the boss pillar in the middle has a lot more health than the other pillars on the side. So I'd recommend killing the four smaller ones and then killing the boss one last. But the distractor is going to want to do their best to be right in the middle of the map, right in the middle of all the five pillars so that they have all the enemies on them and they, can, they try and pull them away from the corner from the sniper. Because the sniper should be in the far, far back right corner by now. It should be pretty easy to get them in that corner. Um, so, so let me go ahead and get to the next phase here and show you what happens. Um, like I said, if you want to try as a, as a distractor to try and do some damage with your with your mortar, dispersion mortar, with your uh, thunder bow or whatever, you could try and do that here and there. But I would say distracting is primarily your role, not necessarily killing the pillars, because the sniper can kill the pillars relatively quickly by themselves. Also something to be very important to note is right when these pillars spawn in, there's going to be twice the number of enemies right at the beginning that spawn out of those pillars. So once you kill those enemies that spawned, the next set that spawns in is going to be half the number of the first phase. So just, it, it wouldn't hurt for the person that's sniping to help kill some of those enemies that spawn initially because it'll make it easier for the distractor from then on because they'll never have that many enemies on the screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, try and kill some of these purple frogs. Alright, they're going to tell. Okay. Right now they're going to say that the teleport entries are coming in, so make sure the sniper is far away in the corner. Make sure the distractor is up front in the middle. And here we go. You see there's two there and two here on this side. So these two on the right side, like I said, you'll see spawn wasps. So try and kill these as fast as possible. The one in the middle, don't worry about. The two on the left, don't worry about yet. So um, the person of distracting, of course, will go forward and they'll try and uh, take all these enemies away from the, the from the corner guy so he can snipe. Um, and like I said, if you have to snipe his wing dive, if you're the last one alive, you can always, you know, just snipe with the crossbow here and there. Try and get your energy back. You know, use these front right buildings for your for your help. And uh, you can always try and finish the mission by yourself if the person died in the sniper. But um, that shouldn't happen, honestly, because if they have all the NPCs there alive or the vehicles, they should be okay. Or at least they can kill a number of pillars to where then you can just you can revive them later. That's one benefit of having a uh, air raider. Um, so even if they die and they have a satellite blaster or a sprite fall or a phobos, you can always the distractor can go and revive them really quick. They can get up and call in their sprite fall, their Vulcan cannon, or whatever they have, the bulge laser on the pillar. And if they die, they die. It's no big deal. Then the, the distractor can go forward, get health again. And uh, then do it again, revive them again, and kill, and they can kill a few more. Um, Ranger can't really do that too well, unfortunately, but uh, Fencer could probably do a few, few good shots on the pillar. But um, that's one thing you can do to beneficial for the person if the person in the corner dies. But you know, you can take all these enemies through these buildings in the front right, and you can really slow them down. So I'd recommend you know making your rounds, try and go to this corner, you know, the corner here, and uh, pull them through buildings. Get some energy back as wing diver. Um, just, just stay here as long as you can. You know, survive. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of nice buildings here. And then, you know, when you have to go away, once the enemies are in these buildings, they'll be stuck here a little bit. Then you can go back around and make your circle. But like I said, as long as you kill those two front right pillars with the wasps, and then even if that's all you kill, and then you die, it's still a lot easier for the, the distractor to finish the mission. So. That, that, that's what makes this mission the hardest, I think, is because you have no breathing time in between the tadpoles and the wasp phase, the tadpoles, and then the pillar phase. So chances are you're going to have a few purple frogs still around you, so the distractor has to be very careful and be very fast and uh, not necessarily fight, but just try and distract as long as they can, keeping that person in the corner alive. And like I said, it may take you a little bit getting used to trying to grab all the enemies because, like I said, if you, if you go too far forward to the front, you may only take half the enemies, and you don't want to do that. You want to try and take most of the enemies. So do your best to try and get the majority of the enemies on you so you can help that, that distractor last as long as they can. But yeah, that's pretty much my recommendation for this mission. That's why it's always easier to take two people on this mission, to have those two different roles. But um, it is possible, of course, with Ranger or Fencer to solo this, but... Um, not online. It's pretty tough online, of course, because it's scaled for four people, but offline is definitely possible. But, uh, yeah, those are my recommendations. Like I said, please share your recommendations. Um, and, uh, as always, thanks a lot for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps more people find the channel. And, uh, remember, Edith doesn't leave a man behind. Ever.
And if you're interested in ways to help support the channel financially, there's the uh, the join button, next to the subscribe button, there's three different tiers, a one dollar, two dollar, five dollar. Or um, watching a few ads helps financially too. So very much appreciate. Hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot.